and I'll sort of describe what this is. Now, this first picture here, I, I made some jokes because it what, what it looks like. Have we made up here yet, guys? I can see them, <laughs> but here we go. All right, so in, in these pictures, I, I told Ron, I said, hun, we look like Masons standing there. <laughs> and my, 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 my son put on there, he said, so mote it be, you know. And that's not the image that we're trying. <laughs> Next year, we're going to go to black aprons because of that. But uh, this right here is the young people. The seniors are standing. They have their right hands up because it's at this time that we're administering the pastoral blessing, which is done uh, by, by the pastors lining up behind microphones going like this back and forth. It's just really a powerful moment. And the next picture, I believe, is, is of us giving the seniors their gifts. That's Pastor David at First Assembly. And uh, we give them the gift of a Bible, uh, a Bible study and a Bible. And uh, you have one more picture. Is that all? Is that all three of them? Okay. Now, this picture here is um, the seniors and the pastors uh, in a group picture. And what's really awesome is that that was the principal's idea. Uh, it just really moved them because of what's happening. And, and again, we absolutely could not do that without your participation in what you did. So may the Lord bless you. May he reward you and remember you for your efforts to make a difference in our community. This is one of the examples of making a difference, not just a living. So God bless you all for what you did. Yes, ma'am. That's interesting because in, in the pictures, you know, I, I said, I said, sting them, you know, we all do our little fingers up like this. And then, you know, one of the, a couple of seniors, they, then they held their Bibles up. And I just absolutely love that. And, and again, couldn't do it. Absolutely couldn't pull it off without you. So the Lord bless you. And, uh, and a lot of times we pastors, we need someone to prod us on. You know, we were just sort of standing around. And then I saw some of you begin to put ice in glasses and that sort of lit the match for us to take off and start doing what we were doing. But maybe next year we'll have one of you be volunteer to take pictures, okay? That would be awesome and we could uh, actually see all of us serving these excellent young people. So I wanted to thank you for that and, and uh, bless you for what you did. Uh, VBS is going to be June the 2nd through the 6th. We'll remind you about that. Uh, go ahead and start signing up. I think, do we have uh, anything in the foyer we do? In the, uh, in the fellowship room, if uh, you'd go ahead and sign your children and your grandchildren up for that. Also, uh, church work day is on the 18th. We begin at 8.30. It's in the bulletin. We want to remind you of that and make sure that uh, you can uh, be a part of that and get that done. All right. I'm looking to see if there's anything else. Um, is there anything else that I haven't said that's, that uh, somebody wants to say? Do I see a hand back there? I do. Yes, ma'am. One, one, one of the volunteers that helped us the other night. Yes, ma'am. Okay. 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 Very good. So get your tickets after this will be lunch after our work day. As a matter of fact, we adjusted the work day, I think, to to accommodate that very thing. So out in the foyer, make sure you get your tickets, even if you're not going to come. Uh, anything that you do be awesome to help us. Anyone else? Is that it? All right, let's prepare our minds and our hearts to worship the Lord our God. If you would stand with me, please. Enter into the public worship of the Lord. Oh, one more thing. I do have a set of keys, and I believe these are our church keys. That, oh, can you catch me? Excellent. Good catch. All righty. All right. So, so let's, let's bow our heads and let's go into worship today. Father, we love you, and we are here because we love you. We're here because we have set this time aside deliberately and on purpose, with a purpose, to hear from you, to be touched by you, and to be changed by you. I pray, Father, that that would take place in the hearts and lives of your excellent people. I pray, Father, that we would leave here completely changed because we have been in your presence. So, Lord, I pray for you to visit us, abide with us, and to inhabit the praises 
of your people. In Jesus' name, God's children said, amen. amen. All right, if you would, please turn in your hymnals to page 277. Let's sing together, Jesus is all the world to me, verses 1, 2, and 4. Jesus is all the world to me, my life, my joy, my all. He is my strength from day to day. Without him I would fall. When I am sad, to him I go. No other one can cheer me so. When I am sad, he makes me glad. He's my friend. Jesus is all the world to me, my friend in trial sore. I go to him for blessings, and he gives them o'er and o'er. He sends the sunshine and the rain. He sends the harvest golden grain. Sunshine and rain, harvest of grain, he's my friend. Jesus is all the world to me, I want no better friend. I trust him now, I'll trust him when his fleeting days shall end. Beautiful life with such a friend, beautiful life that has no end, eternal life, eternal joy, he's my friend. Amen. Page 572 in your hymnals, let's read the word of God together. This is entitled Godly Womanhood. Happy Mother's Day, ladies. Word of God says, who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doeth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She's like the merchant's ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She rises also while it is yet night, and giveth meat to her household, and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field, and buyeth it, and with the fruit of her hands she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength, and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good, her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid. For all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen, and selleth it, and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up, and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Amen? This is the word of the Lord. Now let's go to the screen, and let's sing this song called Saved, Saved. Amen. 
All three verses. I found a friend who is all to me. His love is ever true. I love to tell how he lifted me and what his grace can do for you. Saved by his power divine, saved to new life sublime. Life is sweet and my joy is complete for I'm saved. Saved, saved. He saves me from every sin and harm, secures my soul each day. I'm leaning strong on his mighty arm. I know he'll guide me all the way. Saved by his power divine, saved to new life sublime. Life now is sweet and my joy is complete for I'm saved, saved, saved. When poor and needy and all alone in love he said to me come on to me and I'll lead you home to live with me eternally saved by his power divine Saved to new life sublime. Life now is sweet and my joy is complete for I'm saved, saved, saved. Now tell someone that you're saved in Jesus' name. Greet each one. Amen. I'm saved, saved, saved. my every keeps me singing as I go sweetest name I know sing it as I go All right. Amen. Our ushers would make themselves ready for our morning tithes and offerings. Let me make, uh, let, me let you know this, Rhonda is in Copperas Cove today. Some of you may remember uh, Pastor Joey who came and preached for us. It was months ago, um, uh, maybe around six months ago, he and his wife came and they started a church in Copperas Cove and, and they're already up over 150 people. They're doing very well and uh, they asked Rhonda to come and speak on Mother's Day. So that's where she is right now. So be praying for her and I'm gonna be missing her big time on Mother's Day. But. Um, 
It's good to have all of you ladies here. I uh, want to we'll let you know that we do have gifts for you today. And I actually caught one lady digging through and say, what's in here? I said, look at you. You done gone and ruined your surprise. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but we've got some neat stuff, and it's really neat because Rhonda picked it out. So I think, ladies, you're going you're gonna to love it. Um, I get cool things, and she gets cute things. So uh, maybe I'll just, guys, I'll take care of us. So. But uh, we have a gift for each of you mothers, wives, and ladies. Okay? So. All right, let's, let's prepare ourselves to give to the Lord. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father, we love you and thank you for the honor that it is to share in the responsibility financially of your kingdom here on this earth. You use us, God, and you allow us to participate and invest in the kingdom of heaven on earth. And today we do it with a cheerful heart. We don't do it begrudgingly. We don't do it out of, uh, out of pressure. We do it because we love you. And when we do that, we are allowed to be blessed by you, and I pray, God, that you would bless the obedience and the cheerfulness of each giver, and I pray that you would just strengthen our reach in this community. Help us, God, to be more useful to you and helpful, and help us to be about your business in this community. In Jesus' name, God's children said, amen. Above ye heavenly host, praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Remain standing. Let's sing this song. He touched me. He touched me. Both verses. Shackled by a heavy burden Neath the load of guilt and shame Then the hand of Jesus touched me And now I am no longer the same He touched me Oh, he touched me, and oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something 
happened and now I know he touched me and made me whole since I met this blessed Savior since he cleansed and made me whole I will never cease to praise him I'll shout it while eternity rolls he touched me oh he touched me and oh the joy that floods my soul something happened and now I know he touched me and he made me whole. Aren't you glad this morning? Amen. You may be seated. I'd like for our elders that are assisting me today, if you'd please come at this time. And if the musicians could quietly play that song we just sang, we want to pray for you and ask God to touch you in a, in a mighty way. We believe that God hears and answers prayer. We believe that he still heals and performs miracles. And we believe that it is his will that things go well for us. So here we are today. We're going to pray for you and agree with you in prayer by faith and ask God to touch you. You say, well, Pastor, I've come down so many times and I've asked God the same thing. Listen, Daniel kept praying and was delivered from the lion's den. Amen. Over and over and over again. Is persistence in prayer is very, very important because your prayers often are hindered by demonic forces and God wants to touch you. So we ask and he does the work. So today, if you have need, come down. We want to pray for you and ask God to touch you in a very, very mighty way. Musicians, if you'd please come.
Amen? Amen. All right, at this time, I'm going to ask for uh, Perry's to come with the children, and let's have our children's message today. How's everybody this morning? It's a very special day today, isn't it? Does anybody know what day it is? Mother's Day. Mother's Day is a very special day, right? Well, we've been studying a lot about prayer and about scripture the last few weeks, so I thought it'd be really good to read a few verses that are specifically about mothers, right? The one that we read earlier today, honor your mother and your father, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. That's way back from the book of Exodus. Does anybody remember where honor your mother and your father comes in? What? They're whispering it because Mr. Andrew whispered the answer to them. The Ten Commandments, right. Honor your mother and your father. That is the very first commandment after the initial commandments tell you to honor God. The very first commandment that is about God's people is to honor your mother and your father. How about this one? Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. That's from the book of Proverbs. How about Leviticus? Every one of you shall revere his mother and his father. Oh, and this one goes all the way back to Genesis. The man called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living things. Proverbs, one of my favorite ones. Hear, my son, your father's instructions. Forsake not your mother's teachings, for they are a graceful garland for your head and pendants for your neck. Now, what does it mean to forsake not your mother's teachings? Does anybody know what the word forsake means? It kind of means don't forget. Don't forget. Do the things that your mother tells you. Do the things that your mother teaches you. And you learn things from your mom about Jesus, right? All right, how about this one? From Deuteronomy. Only take care and keep your soul diligently, lest you forget the things that your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart. Make them known to your children and your children's children. That one is to mothers. That one is for the mothers to teach you. Absolutely right. I'm going to ask Miss Heather to come up here if she would. Where did she disappear to? Oops, she's not in here. All right. How about Grandma? Can you come up here for me? Ms. Zavodny, would you come up here? Gail, come on up here too. Yep. I got the gra double grandmas here. And I'm going to ask Cooper and Cameron to come over and sit by Grandma and Mommy. Can you go over to Grandma and Mommy real quick? Go to Grandma. Go to Grandma. Go to Grandma and go to, to both Grandmas. All right. Now, what I want y'all to look at, these are several generations here. This is Grandma and Great Grandma. Mom will be back in here in a little bit. And the grandkids, right? One of the great things. Here we go. Heather, come up here. We called you up and you weren't here. <laughs> All right. Now, I want these moms and grandmoms to put their arms around those grandkids. Put your arms around them. Now, when your moms and your grandmoms hug you and put their arms around you, it's about the best feeling in the world, isn't it? Usually when your mom puts your arms around you or when grandma puts her arms around you, it's because you're hurt or because you need something or because you want something, huh? Yeah, sometimes because you just you want something. But a lot of times, I know sometimes when you guys come up to me and just all of a sudden put your arms around me and say, I love you, it just kind of melts my heart. That's what I want you all to do to grandmas today is kind of melt their heart by putting your arms around them and hugging them. 
Now, you see how their arms circle all the way around? Grandma's arms circle all the way around Cameron. Grandma's arms back there are circling all around Cooper. That's a tight little arm squeeze, right? Now, do you know that God's arms circle all around all of us, all around all of this whole building, and all around this whole world? That's a pretty big love, isn't it? Well, you know how great mom's love is? God's love is even greater than that. And God loves it when you tell him how much you love him. Just like moms love it when you tell them how much they love you. And we've talked a bunch about prayer. And one of the mothers in scripture, years and years and years ago, did not have a child. But she prayed and she prayed and she prayed for a child. Does anybody know what her name was? Mr. Andrew, do you remember? Nope. He guessed wrong. It was Hannah. Hannah prayed for a child, and she would go into the, the, the sanctuary, into the temple, and she would pray, and she would pray. And one day she prayed, and she said if God would give her a son, she would vow to give him back to God. And when she had a child, when God gave her a child, she named him Samuel. Does anybody know what that name means? It means heard by God. It means God heard her prayer, and he gave her a son. And Samuel became a great priest, a great prophet. He was very, very well known, and he did grow up in the church. He had a teacher named Eli. So what I'm trying to tell y'all is to listen to your mothers, because do you know that these mothers and these grandmothers right here, your mothers and your grandmothers, pray for you? They pray for you every day, just like Hannah prayed for her child. And all of these moms have given you back to God because you are God's child. And just like in a few minutes, pastor's going to come up here and say a blessing over you. And that is our way as a church of letting God know that we're here for you, but we realize that you are a child of God. Now, after your prayers, I have something here for you. I want you to take one for you and one for your mom and give it to your mom. These are all scriptures, all Bible verses that I want you all to read together, okay? All right. Anybody want to pray today? And before we move on to prayer, <clears throat> we had a question last week, wasn't it? Oh, yes. Does anybody remember the question? We were talking about the tomb, and after the uh, women had gone to the tomb, they went and told the disciples that Jesus had risen. Sayuri? Who got to the tomb first? Who got to the tomb first, or who entered the tomb first? That's kind of a good way of putting it. So, <laughs> Mr. Andrew, you want to tell us the answer to the question? So, the two that took off running were Peter and John. But Peter was a little bit older than John, so John passed him. John got to the tomb first, but he was scared to go in. He just looked in. He peeped in. He seen what he could see from the doorway. John was the one that walked on in. Uh-uh, Peter. I mean, Peter walked on in <laughs> to the tomb. So Peter was actually the first one in the tomb, but John was the first one to the tomb. Peter was kind of that disciple that was always wanting to be in the middle of everything. So I think Peter just kind of ran into that tomb. What do you think? You think so, who, Pastor? I do, too. I think he kind of ran in there. So everybody was kind of right. John was the first one to get there because he ran really fast, but Peter actually was the first to enter the tomb. All right. Prayers? So one, one other thing about the, uh, the commandment. Mm -hmm. That commandment to honor your mother and father, to listen to them, that is a commandment that comes with a blessing. Do you understand what the blessing is? What was the blessing? Honor your father and mother so that you may have a long life. God may bless your day. So it's a commandment that comes with a blessing. Okay? So that's very important to remember. All right? So, Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all the mothers here. We thank you. Thank you so much for working in our lives and being part of our lives. And, Father, we ask that these little ones today, especially today, concentrate on their moms and you and help them to be obedient and listen to their mom and dad both and help their day to go a little better, that you may 
shine in their life, that they may see a connection with you, Father, and their parents. So, Father, we just thank you. We ask that you come be with us throughout the day. This we all pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. And young people, if you'd stand on these steps right here. How you doing, buddy? All right. We did this the other night where we blessed the seniors. So it doesn't end when you're young. We continue to speak blessings over you. We always will. Congregation, if you stretch your right hand, a promise and blessing to these excellent young people. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for your best to be fulfilled in the lives of these excellent young people. Father, I pray that goodness and mercy will follow them all the days of their lives. And Father, I, I pray that they would understand that they are the head and not the tail, that they are leaders and not followers. They are children of the Most High God, and they have parents that love you, Father. And that blessing is extended into the lives of these young people. I pray, God, that you'd protect them from sickness and harm, protect them from from their hearts being broken. I pray that joy and peace will be their portion. And I pray, God, that no weapon formed against them will ever prosper. I thank you, Father, for your power to rest upon them so that when they become older, they'll be powerful adults that are making a huge difference in this world that desperately needs light and salt. I thank you for these blessings, Father. We agree with heaven and we declare them to be done in earth. In Jesus' name, God's children said, Amen. And amen. All right. You may be seated, young people. You may receive treats. All right. Okay. All right. We've got a fun fact for you. Uh, Mother's Day. Uh, was back in the Woodrow Wilson um, administration. A lady wanted to honor the best mother on earth, which was her mom. And uh, the administration brought it into being. This would have been around the World War I era. And that's where Mother's Day began. I read something, as some of you may have read this morning, that the lady who started it regretted it because it has turned into a large commercial uh, thing. But you know what, I guess I've been part of that commercializing of Mother's Day in that I want to do good things for my, my mom and, and, uh, and my wife, and we want to honor ladies. And so, but to give you an idea of how big this has taken off, it is the second leading uh, reason to buy things on a holiday next to Christmas and Hanukkah. I didn't know that. And the money that is spent... Uh, because of today, let's give you an idea. Um, the money that is spent is $4.2 billion. And most that is only spent on jewelry. And uh, so there's a lot of love for you ladies. And we're glad that you got that jewelry, if you did, on Mother's Day. And for you young people, and I'm giving the word billion out. And to give you an idea, if you were to count to one billion, okay, and you took eight hours a day to do it, and you gave time for you to eat and sleep and, and, and do whatever you do other than that. But if you spent eight hours a day and people paid you seven days a week, it would take you 95 years to count to one billion, all right? And if you were to, to count to four billion, it would take over 475 years. And if you added the 200 million to that, it would be well over 500 years. It gives you an idea of what a billion is. We don't even understand that, that, that uh, we would not be able to do it in our lifetime because life expectancy is not 95. It's actually under that. So anyway, just some fun facts about this day, and it's a good day that we remember ladies and our moms and our women. God bless you. Uh, you are uh, part of God's creation, and you share with men and mankind in that, and I do not know what we would do without you. You were incredible. What a gift you are from God. And David uh, saw, I mean, not David, I'm sorry, Adam. Adam saw the woman Eve, and he says, this is a good, good thing. And he was absolutely right about that. 
Today I want to begin, this is, uh, we are on the Ten Commandments. I didn't plan it this way, but it's neat that it, it, uh, it came this direction. But Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. Today we're talking about honoring your father and your mother. Word of God says in Exodus 20 and 12, Honor your father and mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. Andrew just shared that with us, and it is the, the commandment with a promise that God would say, it will go well with you, and <clears throat> your days will be long if you will honor your moms and your dad. Now, the word honor, we looked at to define it, it means to hold in great respect, to hold in high esteem, to have a high regard for, to defer to, look up to, and think highly of. Do not get the word honor mixed up with agreement. It's not the same thing. You can honor someone without agreeing with them. My mom and dad, just like Ron and I, were fallible people, and we all make mistakes. As a matter of fact, I remember a time in my life that I realized that my mom and dad were, they were just people, and that people are prone to make mistakes. People are prone to misspeak. We're not superstars. We're not superhumans. We're just people. And young people, when you realize that your mom and dad are people just like you, it, it, it really helps us to see them in the right light and how much they have strived to love us and do what is right. There is no age limit for the command to honor your mom and your dad. It doesn't say honor them until you reach the age of 12. You are always to honor and respect your mom and dad. No matter how old they are, no matter where they are, we show them love and respect because they are a gift from God to us. They literally gave us human life. They birthed us. They brought us into existence. And it is because of them that we are alive because they gave us life. And in this changing climate of, of, of our morals and immorality, it's not the case for every child. We are killing over a million children every year to abortion. Those are the ones that we know about, the ones that are documented that we know about. So not every child gets an opportunity. So if you're breathing and living, you ought to look at mom and dad right now if they're here and say, thanks, mom, thanks, dad. Amen? Go ahead and do it, kids. I want you to thank your mom and dad for giving you life because it is a gift that they've given you. Now, I look at the last time that I disobeyed my mom. I'm going to tell you a quick story. I, and and it, wasn't, it wasn't that long ago when I, when I last disobeyed mom. Um, her and dad, I believe, that, um, I believe that dad had begun to decline in some of his cognitive skills. And, and uh, it wasn't the same as he was in his prime. And then mom, uh, unbeknownst to us, had already, I believe she probably had brain cancer at the time. But they came up with this idea that they wanted to go to the Johnson Christmas party in Panama City from Lindale, Texas on a bus. Now that, you know, when I heard that mom was going to say, no, 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 mom, 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 mom. We'll fly you over there. No, sweetie. No, no, no. We've already got the tickets. Well, you can get your money back. No, honey. We, it's going to be adventure. I said, oh, mom, you have no idea what kind of adventure you are embarking on. And I said, mom, no. She said, honey, I want you to stop right now. I mean it. She used her mom thing. And I said, okay, mom. I said, I really don't like it that you're doing this. I said, what, what is your path? I'm not sure. So what I did is I, I did the research and found out where the bus was going. It went everywhere. I forgot how many stops they stopped in Louisiana, one of them being New Orleans. But they had one stop in Mobile, Alabama, that the bus was going to arrive at 1145 in the evening at Mobile, Alabama. They left at like 8 a.m., right? Once it got to Mobile, Alabama, at 11.45 at night, they had an eight-hour layover. Mm -hmm. I, said, I said, Mom, I'll be there before 11.45. I'm going to pick you up. I was already in Panama City. And she said, oh, honey, no, 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 we'll be fine. I said, no, you won't, Mom. I said, it's overnight in a bus station in Mobile, Okay. I love Alabama, but I also know Mobile. And I said, Mom, no, 
honey. She said, don't, you, I, I really mean this. You stop this right now. I said, Mom, I love you. And that's why I'm not going to stop this. And she said, don't you dare come up. I defy you. She said, I forbid you to come. I said, Mom, not only am I going to come, but when you see me, when you get off that bus, you're going to raise both arms and run and embrace me and love me for being there. I told my brother and sister the story, and, and I was, we were at Edward's house in Panama City. And uh, I, said, I said, you know what? I said, Mom, they, they told us, and they said, well, she, they told us the same thing. I said, well, I'm going. And I think I actually flew over there. And uh, I said, I don't have a car. Ever can I use your truck? He said, yeah. I said, you want to come? He said, I ain't going over there. <laughs> I said, Tara, she said, she forbid us to do it. I said, okay, fine. So I got in the truck, and I drove there by myself. Went up to, to, to Mobile. I'm sitting in this bus station. I started looking around, and I was so thankful, so thankful that I went. Because I saw the bus station in all of its glory. And the bus pulls in. Mom gets off. And, and dad, dad gets off. And mom's on her cane. And she looks up at me. And just as I prophesied. <laughs> both, both arms flew up. Holding the cane. Oh, sweetie, we're so glad to see you. I could have asked them for anything in that moment. And I'd have gotten it. I always tried to honor my mom and dad, to love, obey, and respect them because I always saw my parents as a gift from God. Not everybody has that story. Not everybody was as fortunate as I was. And even at that, my mom and dad, they made mistakes because they were human. And I gave them that. I gave them grace when I saw some mistakes that they had made. And I loved them and, and, and gave them honor even in those mistakes because it was in those moments that the Holy Spirit said, they're people just like you, David, and your job is to honor and to respect your mom and your dad. Romans chapter 13 and verse 7. And I'm reading this passage out of the Christian Standard Bible. It says, pay your obligations to everyone. Taxes to those you owe taxes. Tolls. To those you owe tolls. Respect to those you owe respect. And honor to those you owe honor. See, it doesn't matter the circumstances. One time Matthew got pulled over by some guy in a blacked out vehicle with red and blue lights. And he said, Dad, I don't know what he was. He said, but he was looked like he was special forces. And he walked up to my car and and my son is, Matthew, uh, all my boys are licensed to carry. And um, Matthew gave him his license, driver's license and his license to carry. I think Matthew was going a little fast. And, and he gave them to them. And the guy said, do you have your weapon? Matthew said, I do. And the guy said, the, the, the officer said, um, I need you to give me your weapon. And Matthew said, why? He, exactly. When he said that, when he was telling me and the boys this, all of us just went ballistic. Have you lost your mind? Whenever a, a policeman asks you for your weapon, you say, yes, sir, because you give respect to whom you're supposed to give respect. Matthew has never made that mistake again, and hopefully he hasn't had the opportunity to make that mistake many times. But we should always respect those. Matthew was the youngest of the three boys, and you know, we, we give him the grace for being you know, immature and, and inexperienced. But we should always respect officers of the law, people in public office, and above all, our moms and our dads. Even if they do something wrong, even if they make a mistake. I've talked to some friends of mine who don't like policemen and, and they have problems with them. And I said, let me tell you something. If you have a problem with a police officer, on the side of the road is not the time to engage in an argument with someone that has a weapon with a chambered round in it. Amen? We're not talking Bible here. We're talking common sense here. If you've got a problem, you have your day in court, and that's when you do that. But in these moments, we're to give honor and respect to who is owed that. And the Bible tells us to respect those in authority over us. So when the Bible tells us to give honor to whom honor is due and respect to whom honor, respect is due, first in line should be mom and dad, even if they're not infallible. Because they're not. God has commanded you and I so that we would live long and have a good life 
to respect and honor our parents. In the Bible, in the wilderness, life and death was at stake of whether you honored and respect and obeyed your mom and dad. Deuteronomy chapter 21, verses 18, 18 through 21. This is challenging, but you need to understand the context. If someone has a stubborn and rebellious son who will not obey his father and mother, who does not heed them when they discipline him, they shall say to the elders, okay, then, then his father and mother shall take hold of him and bring him out to the elders of his town at the gate of that place. This is where they conducted the political business. They shall say to the elders of his town, this son of ours is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey us. He is a glutton and a drunkard. Then all the men of the town shall stone him to death. So you shall purge the evil from your midst, and all Israel will hear and be afraid. Let me give you some context right quick. The children of Israel in the wilderness, they were a budding nation. And for this nation to succeed and survive the wilderness, which it wasn't just desert cactus and scorpions they were dealing with. It wasn't just thirst and hunger. They had tribes and nations around them that wanted to destroy this slave nation that came out of Egypt. And for them to have a breakdown in the family unit meant that they could all be destroyed quickly and vanished from the entire face of the earth. Plus, you had the fact that the manifest presence of God, the most righteous ever, the most pure and holy, was in their midst in the tabernacle. He was a cloud of, of a pillar of cloud by day and a, and a pillar of fire by night. He was there in a very, very real way, the presence of God. And God cannot, will not, never will tolerate sin. They cannot cohabitate. They can't coexist. If you have a child that is being stubborn and disobedient and rebellious against mom and dad, it not only threatened them as a people, it not only threatened their physical safety and lives, but it also put them at risk of being struck by God himself. This was very serious. And when we read how serious disobedience is, moms and dads, it's never cute at any age for a child to be disobedient and rebellious to their parents. Even those cute, precious little grandchildren that we have. There's times when Anna Lee will, will do something, and Ron and I look at each other, and the eyebrows go up like, mm. Boy, Seth doesn't have to look at us. He's on it already. Does he? Yes, he absolutely will give her a couple of good, firm pats. He absolutely will. The Bible tells us how we're to, to raise our children, and that, that if we love them, we will bring correction to them. And some, sometimes and many times, what worked best with me in my personal life as a child was on my bottom. Their survival depended on honor and respect. So young people, adults, honor and respect your mom and dad. Never, ever do you ever dare to try to show them up and embarrass them in public or in private. Always you should give them honor and respect because listen very carefully to this. Your respect for your parents will mirror your respect for God. Because that dynamic means that God has placed two people in your lives that are very important to you. And if you respect and honor them, you are therefore respecting and, honor, and honoring God. Whether your mom and dad have made mistakes or not, when we respect and honor them, God is pleased with our decisions. God called parental disobedience in the scripture we just read. He called it evil. When you think about that, he say, that's wrong, it's not something that I really am pleased with. It, it's, it, you know, evil, very serious charge to dis disobedience and disrespect. And to rid the evil out from among them was vital to their survival. If they didn't, they wouldn't survive. They wouldn't be a people. They would have been destroyed by themselves in the wilderness. The breakdown of the family would be fatal to the nation of Israel similar to what we're experiencing today here in the United States. When the family begin to break down, when honor and respect for parents begin to break down, we have seen now that our country is slipping, slipping, slipping further into the abyss. And let me make this statement. There is no guarantee that the United States of America, no matter how much you or I love it, is guaranteed survival in the world today. Empires come and empires go. 
and they go and they, they come and go by, the, by, by, by their virtues. George Washington talked about the virtues of a nation and why it was so important at our founding. Very, very important. We have tolerated and we have condoned many different kinds of sins and our tolerance is absolutely killing us as a nation. And it begins with mom and dad. It begins with honor and respect for and to our parents. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 33. Do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. This is why we're not to have fellowship with the works of darkness. Because the works of darkness, unfortunately, will tend to ruin our good conduct. Again, in Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 2. Rather, your iniquities have been barriers between you and your God. And your sins have hidden his face from you so that he does not hear. So our sins become a barrier between us and God. From his voice, from his counsel, and from his ears being inclined to our needs. Very important that we rid this from our lives. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 34. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Now, the word nation in the word of God, it, it, it refers to a family unit. And righteousness lifts us up. But when we don't walk in righteousness and it's sinful, when we disobey God, it becomes a reproach to our family. So, young people, the first major decision you will ever make in your life would be whether I'm going to honor mom and dad or I'm going to dishonor mom and dad. And let me tell you this. There will be people lining up for blocks to dishonor and disrespect your mom and dad as people. You have a great, great opportunity to be a healing ointment to your mom and to your dad, to honor them, to respect them, to hold them in high regard, not because they've earned it, but because God has commanded you to do it, and it is right, and it is important to you surviving in this world that we are in today. Because what you give to mom and dad will be turned to you. If you sow disobedience and dishonor, I can guarantee you your kids will do more to you than you did to your parents. But when you sow honor, when you sow respect and obedience to your moms and dads, it will come back to you. Righteousness begins with honoring moms and dads. This is the first time that you ever act in righteousness is when you respect and honor your mom and dad. So let's go to the extreme example. Can I honor an atheist? Can I honor a drunkard? Can I honor a fool? If that is your lot for mom and dad. The answer is yes. Yes, you can. One of the most compelling stories that I have seen in the life of Joyce Meyer, this great evangelist, seminar speaker, author, tremendous woman of God has done incredible things. You think, well, look, she's got a privileged life, and, and, and you know, <laughs> who could do what she's doing? Her dad, her dad, when she was in her home, raped her every week, twice a week, a standing appointment. And not only did her dad rape her twice a week, every week of her young life, but her mom knew about it and chose not to say anything because she didn't want to disrupt the security of the household. What an incredible tragedy that is. And when you see Joyce Meyer, in what she's doing, she has already practiced forgiveness. That when her mom and dad got to be old, Joyce stepped back into their lives and nursed them and helped them and provided for them late in their life. Did mom and dad deserve it? No. No. But see, Joyce had a relationship with Jesus Christ. And she said, you know what? I'm going to honor that commandment. And no matter what, my mom and dad don't deserve anything. We often say they deserve to be in hell with their backs broke. Amen? So she walked in and provided and cared for these two detestable people. And through that ministry that she returned to those, those parents that didn't deserve it, God honored Joyce Meyer. God has blessed Joyce Meyer. God has expanded her reach. God trusts her with great things because of this great move. Not only that, but her dad and her mother, late in their lives, pulled Joyce aside and said, 
we are so sorry. You've never mentioned these things. And we want to apologize and repent for the sins we committed against you. It was that grace that provided an atmosphere of forgiveness. Now, did Joyce need that to, to, to carry on? No, because Joyce had already forgiven this detestable couple. But she got the gift of them being able to say, we're sorry. You see, it doesn't matter what mom and dad has done. It doesn't matter how worthy they are. We are, we are compelled and commanded by God to honor them and to show them respect and love. Amen? Brother Mike's not here. I need some help. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Thank you. So we need to always remember this crucial, crucial principle in God's word to honor and respect our parents. Proverbs chapter 22, we're about to wrap this up. Proverbs 22 and verse 6 tells us to train children in the right way. And when they were old, when they are old, they will not stray. This is a promise from God. That when you do the right thing to your children, that they will not stray in the end. I believe in confidence that when you've got a mom or a dad that is praying and is trained and loving their children, that things are going to go well because God is true to his part. He will never let you down. He will always remember you when you do the right thing. Young people, when you obey mom and dad, he will remember you. When you respect and honor mom and dad, especially when you disagree, especially when it's not comfortable, God will honor you, God will lift you up, and he will exalt your nation. If you had the fortune and the blessing to have godly parents, Proverbs 15, verses 21 through 23, it says, Folly is a joy to one who has no sense, but a person of understanding walks straight. Without counsel, plans go wrong. But with many advisors, they succeed. To make an apt answer is a joy to anyone, and a word in season, how good it is. If you have been giving a godly mom and a godly dad, you should cherish their counsel. You should listen to them. You should take their words as apples of gold in pitchers in silver, fitly words that are spoken into your life from godly people who've spent their lives doing their best to follow the Lord to, their be to the best of their ability. It is a gift from God that you have if you have godly parents. And you ought to hug them, love them, and say, I appreciate you, and I love you. The last words I spoke to my dad, I remember when we were in Detroit, Tara and I, this is, this is Tara and I. You, know, you put our two minds together. and <laughs> Tara said, I want to take Dad and show him some of Detroit. Dad was days or weeks away from dying and leaving this earth. His body was withered away. He was just bones, his joints, you could see them. And, and uh, we asked the doctor, I said, what do you think? Tara wants to take him around and show him down. Of all places, downtown Detroit, you know, this destination for tourists, you know. In the dead of winter, it was blowing cold and everything. It was snowing. The doctor said, sure. In other words, what's he got to lose? See, I didn't think that. When he said, sure, I thought, yeah, it'd be a great idea. He wouldn't say it was a good idea. It was more of a what has he got to lose thing. So we wheeled Dad out there and got him out to the car and, you know, four degrees, blowing snow on the top parking garage level, Right? And, and we, we wheeled the wheelchair up there beside the door. And for some reason, I figured Dad just step out and go and sit down, you know. It ain't going to happen. So I, I began to pick Dad up. And I felt his arms. I felt his ribs. And I thought, uh-oh, oh, this is not a good idea. And I'm my father's son, okay. If we start something, we're going to finish it. You know what I mean? We're going to finish. So I, I lifted Dad up. And when I lift Dad up, his pants went down. <laughs> The wind, Tara and I looked at each other and started laughing. I thought, oh, dear Lord. Tara, grab his pants. She pulls them up. And I looked over at Dad. Dad's going. <laughs> <coughs> we put my dad in that car. And Tara drove him to the darkest places of downtown Detroit. There are many times I'm constantly looking around, you know. And there's this one artsy place where a bunch of urban artists put together. 
it just looked more like a trash dump to me, you know, but it was a famous place in Detroit. We're driving around. I'm thinking, what are we doing? I took Dad to Motown, showed him, Dad, this is where it happened. You know, this is where Stevie Wonder and the Temptations and, and the Supremes, Diana Ross, Dad hated that, you know. <laughs> I'm going to say, Dad wants to hear the Sons of the Pioneers, you know, and here I'm showing Motown. But in going through all of this, it was love that we were giving to our dad, and dad appreciated it. And dad was always the kind of guy that wanted to go out and see stuff, and he just looked at everything, and I said, what do you think about this, dad? He, he'd go. <laughs> but we showed honor, respect, and love to dad and took him around, even though it probably wasn't something that we should have done. We did it because we loved dad. We did it because we wanted to do something for him. And it was just an extension of our our. our our attempts to honor and to love our parents. If God has given you godly parents, he's given you a gift. And my dad spoke many things into my life, and so did my mom. She prayed for me many, many times. And for me to disregard their counsel, to ignore them, and throw away someone who loves me more than anybody else on this planet besides God, for me to discard that is the act of a fool. And my parents didn't raise no fool. Amen? We should always honor and respect our moms and dads. Every time you do it, God's watching, God's listening, God's paying attention. And so is the world. Children are called. It is our calling. It is our destiny and one of our purposes to respect our mom and our dad. So much so that God put it in the Ten Commandments. And I want to be worthy of being called a man of honor, a person that will walk in honor. This man of honor means a man who adheres to what is right or to a high standard of conduct. This is what a man of honor, a daughter of honor is. We respect and honor and love and cherish our moms and dad who love us who have cared for us and protected us. And if they haven't, if they've been terrible, if they've been horrible, then they become a ministry opportunity for us to love on and return what was supposed to be given to us. And then God can turn and bless you abundantly. Guys, we can't lose in this, can we? You can't. Anything with God, there's no lose situation involved with Him. If you have good parents, that's a good thing. If you had horrible parents, you can turn it into good. What the enemy meant for harm, God will turn for good. I will obey God's commands. And I hope and pray and trust that I spent my lifetime giving mom and dad honor. Oh, I gave my mom fits. I gave dad fits. There were shameful times and I did stupid, dumb things. They loved me, never stopped loving me. And they always, well, they never, never gave up on me, never gave up on me. And that's what I want to do today in all the things for God. I will obey God's command. Bow your heads with me, please, and let's pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for the wonderful gift that you gave myself, Edward, and Tara. You gave us Claude and Joy Johnson this special, wonderful couple that did their very best with what they had to do the best for Tara, Edward, and I. I want to thank you right now for the gift. And Lord, if you see them there, I would appreciate you telling them how grateful that we are for them. Lord, I pray for families today. If there are young people here today or adults that have not respected their moms and dads, I pray that your Holy Spirit would convict their soul and speak to them because there is time to write that. It can be fixed with humility and love. We love you, Father. You are wonderful, and I thank you for your gifts. In Jesus' name, God's children said amen. Stand with me, please. I want to sing you a song. Well, let's sing this song together that mom and dad taught me. I heard this all the time in church and VBS. This is a song to the Lord. It simply says, into my heart. Let's sing this twice through. I 
Amen. Very simple. Into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today, come in to stay, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. We're going to sing that one more time, and when we do, I want you to sing it as a prayer, as an invitation for the Lord Jesus to come in and take up lordship in your life. Are you ready? Let's sing it. Into my heart, into my heart, come in to my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today, come in to stay, come in to my heart, Lord Jesus. He is faithful and just to forgive you of all your sins. If you mean that, Jesus will absolutely come into your heart and change your life. Guys, take care of your wives and your mothers. God bless you, mothers. God loves you, and so do we. It is an honor to have you here today. We've got some gifts to give you. If the confirmands would come and prepare those gifts, they're going to help me hand them out today. So the Lord bless you. Have a great time. Guys, don't you dare let that lady cook today. Don't you do it. All right. God bless you. You may be seated. Right here, brother. Right there. Thank you, man.